I was amazed um, that there hadn't been more written on the Dunedin Sound. I mean, you know, as an academic, I go off to musicology conferences around the world, usually talking about David Bowie, but you mentioned that you're from Dunedin, and other people immediately say, oh, Dunedin Sound, you know, the chills, the lanes, the clean. It's, you know, universally known, and yet in terms of publications and stuff, there'd been almost nothing. I mean, Matthew Bannister um, wrote a book about his experience with, you know, sneaky feelings, and there's been um, magazine articles and so forth, a few academic articles. Um, Roger Shepard's just published his um, account of it all this year too. But, the, yeah, just the lack of stuff really, well, it did two things. It made me think, that's wrong, but it also made me think, oh, there's an opportunity. Yeah, I wanted to make it Dunedin-centric first and foremost. I guess initially I wanted to try and make it all-encompassing, but once I actually got into it, there were just so many bands associated with the movement and I didn't want to do like 30 bands and have each of them get a page each in the book kind of thing so I decided to pull it back to the main protagonists if you like and that was a really hard thing so I sought the opinions of a lot of people um, who were involved with Dunedin Sound um, to get, come up with I guess you'd call it an A-list even though I don't like using that term and I pulled it back to 17 acts um, and then that gave me the scope to give each a really decent chapter. I realised that this book was a chance to really preserve some visual history of the movement and so it ended up being, instead of being 50% text, 50% pictures, it's probably more like 30% text, 70% pictures. There's over 250 pictures in there and a good proportion of those have never seen the light of day before so that's really exciting. One thing I was very conscious of is I didn't want to come in as an outsider and say this is what happened, this is what it was all about and that's why I sought all these expert commentaries from people like Roy Colbert, for instance, you know, who was right at the heart of the scene, right from the word go. Um, it's why I got Graham Downs to do the foreword. It's, um, I wanted people that had been here telling the story more than my view from afar kind of thing.